Welcome! This is episode number 12. The episode that I did when I actually had a heart-to-heart -heart with you guys went down really well. And to my surprise, I thought maybe you guys didn't want to see me rambling to camera only. But turns out, rambling to the camera is maybe what you guys want. So, here is another one. In this episode, we're going to be talking about how Maya or any 3D software you use is just a tool for you to create and how some people lose track of that sometimes and how you can actually not do that and become a better artist, a better animator and just kind of keep it focused with your creativity and use the tools as best as you can. So let's do this. Let's talk about 3D software, engines and much more in this episode number 12. So before I actually get into the content of this episode, I would like to say that I'm at 900 subscribers. I am so looking forward to getting to that 1,000 subscribers. Here's a statement that I'd like to make to you guys since you've been so amazing with me. So if I hit 1,000 subscribers from that point onwards, all the episodes I do in the future, if it's to do with 3D and if I do it on the computer, I will live stream it as much as possible. I know you guys have a lot of questions when I do my work. I, I tested it out, I'm ready to go, but I want to do it only when I hit 1,000 subscribers because that is a major milestone for me. Let's make it happen, spread the word and tell a friend to tell a friend. I'm gonna take you back to my university days. We were about 30 people in one class and my course back in 2003, <laughs> feels like a long time ago, was called the uh, Animation Specialist. We were all supposed to end up as animators after three years of doing a bachelor's degree. What happened was that we were getting taught how to use Maya. So they were telling us what buttons to push, they were telling us how to rig, how to add hair, how to model, they were telling us all the stuff that actually it's Maya as the software. When you think about it, from a curriculum standpoint, it makes sense because if you learn the tool, then you can animate better. What happens in reality is that you need to learn animation only. And animation, it's a part of Maya and that is the one part that you have to master. Everything else you can forget about. So I decided to then harness in my last year to harness my skills to just be an animator. Out of the 30 people that actually kind of uh, did the course with me, only about two, myself and another, actually ended up being animators. Maybe three. And animation by itself is a beast. So when you put the Maya with the animation, it becomes this humongous thing you could never ever tackle. So a lot of people drifted away to maybe do a VFX. People drifted in different ways. After I left university, I met my mentor, which I will not name now. Maybe in the future I'll tell you the story because it's a very interesting story I feel. And he was the one that told me like, just focus on the animation itself. Don't do anything else in Maya. Learn the basics of animation first and then take it to that next level. I found after that, when I started working professionally, that a lot of people actually still, even as professionals, get caught up in this loop of being distracted by the software. The problem is that all that time that you're investing on something else, is taking away from the time that you should be learning animation. It depends on the person, individual, the circumstances. If you're freelancing, you're supposed to be a, a bit of a do-it-all. But if you just want to actually work for a studio animating, the bigger the company that you're going to end up in, the more the role is going to be specific to one thing. If you actually take time away from your animation, it needs to be for a really good reason. So your role as an animator is to become the best animator you can be. So for that, you should instead be practicing your craft and just animate as much as you can so you can actually become that really good animator. So if you know Henke and you don't know mocap, then go and find some mocap and clean it up and learn that skill. You should always have a next goal as an animator. Animation, it's a lifetime type of job. You can never learn it all. Don't waste your time learning other skills that take away from the time that you should be animating. Yes. If you work in games, you are going to animate in a very technical way, meaning that your animations are going to be have to be polished and great, but you're going to have to know how to put them in game. So that process of animating, doing animations, polishing them, and then putting them in game, that bridge sometimes is easy, sometimes is hard. So the harder the bridge is, the more technical stuff you're going to have to learn in between those two in order to make it work. Because the process is so complex, obviously you want to make your life easy 
So it's easy for you to actually go in, delve deep and learn how to actually make everything possible so you can make that process easier. And that's good. That's exactly what I try to do. And normally what ends up happening with that process is that you will end up suggesting new tools or suggesting new workflows. And that's great because that's how it should be. You should make that bridge between animation and game super easy. Go into the studio, learn as much as you can about the animation in the engine in order to make that bridge as smooth as possible. Everything else that you're just interested in is good to know. And perhaps if you have the time, learn it. But if you don't, don't get distracted or bogged down by things that are outside that realm. I am still amazed by the amount of things you can do with an engine and it's only getting better by the year and, uh, and, and I think games have a bright future because of this, it's beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. Just make sure that you focus as hard as you can into your craft. That's basically the conundrum that I've been dealing with all my career. <laughs> I remember one time I actually went into muscle deformation, so I went down that rabbit hole and I found myself three months later thinking why am I learning this? I can just animate this and that's it. Is this going to be used just the one time and that's about it? And how am I going to be able to use this professionally at some point? Maybe never. You need to actually put your effort where your skill is and where you want to be in the future. So if your goal is to be an animator and nothing else, just focus on being an animator. But as soon as you have that feeling inside of you, that you've been doing this for way too long or this is not exactly what you signed for or or maybe you're steering away from what you wanted then let it go or talk with someone about it because you should be doing what you're passionate about if you're passionate about it it's easy for you to do it but if you're not feeling it if you're just doing the job for job's sake then obviously you're not going to care so much about it so make sure you always care make sure you stick to it stay true to the lane that you chose Maya, 3D Max, Motion Builder, Engines, whatever engines, Unreal, Unity, all those things, you should see them as just a tool. And this tool, it's actually right in between your creativity here and your end result here, because that's basically what the game is about. You have an idea here, great idea, or maybe you're working on someone else's idea, and you have a tool here in the middle. Maya, engine, maybe two or three tools, doesn't matter. And these tools help you or stop you from getting to the third step here. That's basically where you wanna be. So when you start using these tools in this way, as in a means to an end, then that's fine. That's exactly how you should be using them. But when you actually are creative and you get lost in this third step and you never get to here, that's when it becomes a problem. That's basically what I wanna say with this video. The reason why I'm saying this, it's because Mark Jackson was here last week and we had fun, did the interview. Hopefully you're gonna have another interesting interview coming soon, I won't spoil it, but it's gonna be really cool. I think you guys are gonna hear a lot about technical tools, maybe this guy just has tools in Maya and why does he complicate Maya? What I'm trying to do here is hopefully pass on to you what has been given to me, which is Maya by itself, bare bones, it's good but it gets in the way now maya with tools on top specific tools obviously helps you in your animation and that's basically what i'm trying to help you with i'm trying to actually get maya to actually be that conducting lane for your creativity that's basically how i've been setting up my maya through the years i want maya to be as invisible as possible i want to know exactly that if i click this button this happens fast because animation is already hard enough. I mean, if people back in the day when they first started animating with just a pencil and a paper had a really tough time animating, it was such a long process, such a craft that they spent so much time. We have to animate just like them, but we have a thousand and one buttons and things that do different things that is not animation. I got to a point in my career that I was like, I'm hitting a ceiling here. Why is this complicated? Can this be easier? So I searched, did all the hard work that you guys don't have to do now. <laughs> and I found a tool here and a tool there that actually did make 10 steps into one step. All those things are things that take away time from your animation. What you should be focusing on, it's the quality of animations, your arcs, your spacing, your timing, the, the principles of animation. That is the thing that you should be focusing on at all times when you open your Maya, 
that is what should be in your mind all the time. Make sure that you focus on your animation, you focus on the rules of animation, you focus on becoming a better animator. Try not to focus so much on the things surrounding animation, the things that actually just become distraction because you want to be the best animator you can be. I want you to be the best animator you can be. So make sure you help yourself by focusing on the good stuff. Right, got to the end of another episode. So another tips and tricks, a little chit chat uh, with you guys, you behind the camera. I highly appreciate you guys being here as always. I hope you guys enjoy this. Do let me know what you think about this episode. Do let me know what you think about this sit downs, the one-on-one -on -one situation they have going on. I would love to actually kind of get some feedback from you guys. And as mentioned before, I'm just about to hit the thousand subscribers. So please spread the word, please subscribe, press that bell button and make sure you leave a comment, introduce yourself, say hi. And if you don't know what to say, just say dope or nope. And that way I know if the content is good or not. And I hope this chit chat helped you out a little bit more in your career to become an animator. These things can become complicated sometimes, overwhelming sometimes, uh, this animating business, especially as you get to be a professional. Thank you very much once again for joining me. And until next week, I hope you guys stay well, stay safe and peace.